Anyway, moving on to Manny in Brooklyn. How you doing? Hey, Matt. How are you? Pretty, Pretty good. good. show, and uh, glad to be on. <clears throat> Just have a quick question. Um, I was wondering, because I've been stumped by this in the past, when I have conversations with theists, and when they say, well, okay, there are similarities between humans and other apes and monkeys because there's a common creator. Okay. So I was wondering, how can I respond to something like that? Because they, they stumped me and I kind of didn't know what to say. You want to go? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would go back to something Tracy says a lot, is that you, before you attribute something to a creator, you should demonstrate that there's a creator first. Uh, before you start talking about what the creator might have done. Um, that would be the most likely explanation for why there's similarity between humans and apes. That's, a, that's an explanation, I guess, but you know, I would ask them, why do you prefer that explanation? What's your evidence that they were created and that there's a creator? The other thing about explanations is that they should be edifying. They should provide additional information or increase our understanding of something. And if you say that the reason there are similarities between humans and other apes is because they had a common creator, well, that's coming from someone who believes that humans and centipedes have a common creator. Um, right. So there's clearly not similarities there that are, that are so obvious. Um, and so you could say that the reason that humans and other apes have similarities is because there's a common creator. Or you could say the reason there are similarities between them is because they evolved through a common process and have a relatively more recent common ancestor than humans and centipedes. Um, and which of those two actually serves as a better explanation? Because the God claim, the God hypothesis, has no explanatory power. It's an attempt to solve a mystery by appealing to a bigger mystery. Um, if it's magic, if, it, if something can be used as an, as an answer to anything, then it's an explanation for nothing because it doesn't add any information that helps us understand why this is. It's just a bald assertion. Now, you can't, when, when you, you know, it says here, how, how can you refute that? You can't prove that it's wrong. That's, that's the thing is the God uh, proposal right. is, isn't falsifiable. It's, right. it's identical to them saying that the reason that humans and other apes have similar characteristics is because of magic. Well, you can't prove that wrong either. You also can't prove universe creating pixies wrong. You know, the, 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 these propositions that are unfalsifiable are ultimately empty. Right, right. Yeah, makes sense. Um, also, while I was on hold, I thought of something else. Okay. And that is... <clears throat> When, uh, like, what's your explanation for, let's say, people who seem to be, I don't know, clairvoyant or psychic or whatever. Like, I, had, I knew someone who was having, um, their husband was, was leading, like, a completely other double life for, like, 20 years. And that person and, went and spoke to a psychic and they revealed this information to them? No, not a psychic, but someone approached her in, I don't know, a supermarket or whatever what it was, and basically, like, knew her, knew her plight, knew what was going on, and, and sensed her sadness or whatever, and, and spoke to her about it, when this woman didn't even know her. So I was wondering, like, I know that none of this proves a God or anything like that, but what's your opinion on that? Um, people that you know supposedly have a. I don't. I don't have enough evidence from anecdotal accounts to make to tell you what happened or why in any specific situation. What I can say is that people who have claimed to be able to get messages from beyond um, have never successfully passed a, a, an appropriate test to demonstrate that they can do what they claim they do. Instead, what you see is a prevalence of. Uh, TV psychics and mediums in heavily edited, spoon-fed, hot reading environments. And you have anecdotal stories like the one you're talking about where somebody came up to somebody and seemed to know something about him. Now, right. it may be the case that some people are better at reading people than others, that some people ha are much more tuned to uh, their empathy uh, of being able to see when somebody's sad. and. There are a handful of reasons why people are uh, obviously visibly sad in public. 
I mean, you know, did you just lose somebody? Did you find out something's going on? Are you curious about, you know? So the fact that on occasion somebody's going to get it right doesn't seem surprising to me. Matter of fact, what would be miraculous and surprising is if nobody ever guessed right. If nobody ever was able to predict something about another person, and that would be that would be miraculous. Right, right. Okay. So the, the the key is nothing. You shouldn't believe anything until there's sufficient evidence to warrant belief. To believe. And so it, when right. we hear about psychics and mediums and things like that, the the position isn't oh these are all cons and frauds and liars. Um, the position is these people haven't demonstrated that they can actually do what they claim to do. Yeah. under proper test conditions. Right, right. All right, well, uh, again, thanks for uh, listening and answering my questions. Uh, I won't take up too much of your time because I know sure. you've got other things. But, again, John, Matt, you guys are awesome. Love the show. Keep, right. on, keep on trucking. All right, thanks, Manny. Thanks, Manny. Appreciate that. And that actually kind of goes back to something that I had wanted to talk to Tim about until he started becoming an apologist for slavery. Uh, <laughs> This idea about prophecy that, that he talked about, where there's this passage in Psalms, and he sees what happened to Jesus as a fulfillment of that. Um, sometime in the near future, probably in the December time frame, maybe January, um, as part of my Patreon project, I'm going to be doing something about prophecy. And I'm going to talk about you know, how we can go about determining that this is a prediction and it was fulfilled. In order for us to count that, it's something that needs to be fulfilled by a very specific event. A, a single event that is clearly and obviously what was predicted. Vague predictions, uh, you just can't count. You know, oh, they pierced my hands. Okay. Um, and even though, even though if you found out, if, if, if it met all the criteria and you found that this passage in Psalms was reflected in uh, the New Testament with what happened with Jesus, and you could demonstrate that there's a causal connection between the two, that this is the prophecy and this is clearly its fulfillment, what do you have then? You don't know why or how it was fulfilled. You don't know if it was because there was a God who predicted this, or if the author of the Psalms got lucky, or if someone was working to actively make that happen, yeah. or if there's somebody with a time machine who went back. You have no way to distinguish between all of those possible explanations for it. And so when you say that the fulfillment of prophecy is the basis for why you believe the Bible, what you're really saying is, I see connections, and I think the most plausible explanation for those connections is that there's a God who directed all this. How did you determine that that's the most plausible explanation instead of time machines and aliens and lucky guesses and people actively working to make things happen? You know, if I, if I walk into a restaurant and make a prediction that I'm going to get a steak medium rare and I get a medium rare steak, did the waiter fulfill prophecy? Or was this simply someone working to make a goal happen? Yeah. Uh, well, and if, so, and if somebody wanted to make up a story ab about a Messiah who fulfilled prophecies, they're familiar with what the prophecies are. So they're going to tell a story that fulfills the prophecies that they want fulfilled. Yep. So there's lots of possibilities. You have to prove that the prophecy was actually made before the event that fulfilled it. Um, you have to... There's a lot of things before you can say this is a, the fulfilled prophecy. And, and within, within Christianity, it's even worse. Because a lot of the prof, so-called prophecies that Christians want to point to that Jesus supposedly fulfilled are not considered prophecies by Jews. I mean, this is their book. This is their Messiah. <laughs> and their and they have certain <laughs> prophecies that they have you know, cataloged as these are the, the prophecies that apply to our Messiah uh, if he should ever arrive. And of those, uh, Jesus doesn't score particularly high, highly. He wasn't, you know, a warlord who ushered in a, a new uh, era for Jerusalem. Uh, and yet they go through, and Matthew, the author of Matthew, who isn't Matthew, or <laughs> we have no reason to conclude that it was in fact Matthew, but the author of that book is notoriously the worst of all the Gospels for going back and trying to grab anything he can find in the Jewish scriptures to say that Jesus fulfilled it. And he's so bad at it that he not only does he grab things that aren't prophecies, but he grabs things that clearly apply in a different context in order to develop a virgin birth and things like this. Um, and none of that means that the Bible is false or wrong or that it's not prophecy. What it means is that you have no good foundation for claiming that it is.
And that's, getting back to the first call, that's my position. My position is not to sit here and preach Jesus didn't exist and Christianity is a fiction. It's to say I used to believe this and I don't because I discovered I didn't have good reasons. And I'd like to know why other people think they have good reasons. And in Tim's case, I, the good reasons or his reasons, whether they're good or not, have led him to the point where he's willing to accept what he, whatever it says and proclaim it to be good, even if everything in his being should be screaming that this is not a good thing. 